This screencast is going to look at summer 2016 question 2 focused on the area of performance measurement. And we're also going to pay a good bit of attention to the exam technique, particularly when you're trying to answer narrative questions in the SFMA exam. So you've assumed you've read through the question. In terms of there's only three key requirements here. Part A was to outline and briefly discuss one limitation of both the KPIs currently used by leisure to evaluate performance. Then you're asked for part B is for a balanced scorecard and give two measures for each perspective and explain the rationale for each of the measures. And that's worth 10 marks. And finally, then on the basis of the information provided, critically evaluate so the pros and cons of values proposal from a financial and commercial perspective. And that's for seven marks. I think one of the most important things at the outset is this was a very popular on summer 2016 exam, predominantly because it was so short in terms of it was a single page, and also because it was predominantly narrative. So one important insight is if you go and look at the examiner report. So we see here the examiner said this was the most popular question, i.e. nearly three quarters of the candidates attempted it, but very important from your perspective to learn about is it was the lowest average mark. So even though it looked the most attractive, students, as you said here, the examiner said, they didn't read the question and they didn't answer exactly what is asked. So again, this is a good question both to cover off performance measurement, but also to look at exam technique at CAP2 SFMA. So we're going to firstly look at part A, which is outline and briefly discuss one limitation of both measures. So there's four marks, so it doesn't take uh, too much work to figure out. It's going to be two marks each for your discussion of a limitation of each of the KPIs. So the background to this question is Leisure is a hotel business that has two hotels, the View Hotel and the Regent Hotel. They're obviously worried about their performance measurement and they're also interested about a particular offer they've been made from this company called Value. So we're told here there are two different um, hotels. Both hotels are open for 365 days a year, and two separate people uh, manage each hotel. So you're told one is a 100-room hotel, the other one is a 20-room boutique hotel, So and each of them have their own metrics. However, what we're interested in for Part A is, historically, when you're evaluating the performance, Joe and Mary, who are the, the owners, um, have concentrated on maximizing the total number of guests and the annual profit of each hotel. And again, Lisa and Tom, who are now the managers, have continued with this approach. So the key point is here, we're asked in part A, what's one limitation of both of the KPIs? So we're looking for one limitation of both. So if we go up, and the first one is total number of guests. So again, this is a very practical um, question. You're trying to think, what would be a limitation of using the total number of guests? Well, one obvious one is you don't know what type of guests they are. So whether they could be normal um, holiday guests, they could be corporate guests, they could be guests from a wedding, and each of those may have a different profile in terms of their profitability. One other very important point here is to realize the majority of the time hotels will not price per guest, they will price per room. Therefore, looking at the total number of guests may not necessarily tell you much about the income that's coming in from those guests. So that's two very important points there that you have to understand how a hotel kind of works and where it might be a limitation of using that type of measure. In terms of the annual profit of each hotel, well again that makes sense to some extent as you want to make sure that the business is profitable. However, an important thing for a hotel is there's actually different subsections of a hotel business. So for example, you may have the rooms, which is sometimes called accommodation, you might have food, you might have the bar, you might have the gym, you might have a spa. So it's important that if you really want to measure that, you probably have to be a bit more granular in terms of the level of detail that's solely looking at just annual profit. Because you really won't be told what, what is actually going on. And of course, a good student will also realize there that profit really um, is a financial figure. It's a lagging figure. that it, it tells you what's happened in the past. And you should be supplementing that, complementing it with non-financial measures as well, which of course is part and parcel of the balanced scorecard. Now, in terms of an exam technique, remember, it's only two marks each. So the students who do very well here are you mark short, concise points, you hit your point and you move on. The examiner does not want to see long, rambling paragraphs because you've probably got your marks and you're eating into your time for other questions. 
So part B then asks, if they want to implement a balanced scorecard, so you're told they're interested in improving their current system of performance measurement, and Tom is now aware of a balanced scorecard concept. And what you're actually asked to do now is give a structure how the balanced scorecard might look for the Regent Hotel, giving two measures for each perspective, and importantly, watch for the extra requirement, briefly explain the rationale for each of your measures. So we have two measures for each perspective and explain the rationale. So that the first thing is testing you, do you know the four perspectives? So there's four perspectives for the balance scorecard. There is financial, there is customer. So financial means the traditional, how do we look from a financial perspective? How do we, the business look from a customer's perspective? The internal processes. So what, what do we do and do we do it well? So in terms of what goes on in a business. And finally, then, you have what's called learning and growth. So they didn't actually tell you what the four perspectives were here. You had to know them. So you're essentially asked for two measures from each. And when you have little linked multiple requirements like this, where you have to give a measure and a rationale, I think it's always useful, particularly from the examiner's perspective, set it out in a neat table. So there's no ambiguity. The examiner can clearly see you've given them a measure and you've given them an associate rationale. Because if you do it in kind of paragraphs or in a, a linear approach, you may, it may not actually be clear to the examiner where the link is and they may not give you all the marks. So try and make it as easy as possible when the examiner is viewing your script. So if we set it up, I the, the four perspectives down along, I put here measures, and then I put in here, maybe over another one, rationale. So again, if we look from the examiner's perspective, it's very clear where I'm hitting the key points and they can see how it's linked up. So the final step is obviously in this question is actually give the measures. And it's important to go back and look at the examiner feedback before we start in terms of what where did students fall down in this question. Well they fell down predominantly because well one, they came up with ideas about how to run a hotel, but they didn't give any measures. So remember you were asked for a measure, so make sure you give something that can measure the performance. And the second thing is, and this is very important to cap two, do not copy straight out of the textbook. A lot of students, the examiner said, were taking from a manufacturing company rather than the hospitality sector. You need to, as much as possible, apply the answer to the facts of the case. In this case, we're looking at a hotel, so we're going to try and keep the measures as relevant as possible to the hotel sector. So in this case, we're asked for two measures for financial. And again, don't be overly worried if yours do not match exactly what the suggested solution is. There's a load of different possible answers uh, how you might measure performance but the key thing is you are linking it to the facts of the case and you're providing a rationale so for example here we might put in um, the restaurant profit because again you want to have a profitable restaurant and you might put in here um, food offering is a core element of hotel so something like that to tell the examiner why am I looking at restaurant profit well I want to have it it's a core aspect you could equally say if for example you look at accommodation profit that the accommodation offering the rooms themselves in a standalone basis must be profitable that must be a key goal right. another possible one here might be um average room charge so this is a useful one because you'll be able to benchmark yourself against similar companies or similar hotels in your locality and similar starred hotels if you know what star it is. So why you want um, rationale popular benchmark for hotel sector. All right. So why would you want to know the average room charge? Well you'd want to make sure that are you in sync with all your competitors that you're charging in and around the same amount because otherwise you're unlikely to be competitive uh, in the marketplace. So, so there are only two, you're only required for two but there's several different ones you can have as long as you give a clear rationale and it's linked to the hotel it'll be more than fine. The customer perspective a lot of them can be very general similar the ones such as customer complaints and um, the number of customer complaints is obviously a big one because it's such a an important aspect of a hotel management that if there's a couple of bad complaints, um, this can news can get around and it can result in a drop off in um, in occupancy rates.
The other obvious one, if you want to be very specific to hotels, might be a TripAdvisor rating. So what is the TripAdvisor rating of a hotel? Because that would be a key part of if a customer is researching your business, that's one of the key things they'll go to is online and look at the TripAdvisor rating. Another measure, if you could measure it, might be um, repeat stays. So how many times are retention of customers, how many times does it come back, and how often do they come back? So they're key ones. Again, you're trying to give what the measure would be, and you also then try and give what the rationale would be as well. Just so you're telling the examiner, customer complaints, very important in the hospitality sector, because a lot of it is referral um, from prior customers. Likewise, same logic for TripAdvisor ratings, which is very specific and shows the examiner you've thought about it, and repeat stays. What the internal business process looks at is how good are you at what hotels do? So everything, for example, the average check-in or check-out time. So how long does it take you to check in someone? How long does it take you to check them out? Average room turnaround time. So the quicker you are at getting a room turned around, the more efficient you are, and there's less cleaning costs and less time involved. So what you're trying to see is how efficient can we be at the things that a hotel are supposed to do, providing rooms, providing a check-in, check-out service. So again, there's plenty of other ones you can think of there, but the key point is uh, you're trying to be as efficient as possible uh, from a business perspective. So the final perspective then is looking at it from the learning and growth. So this is really looking at how is your business set up for the future in terms of growing, in terms of innovating, in terms of actually learning new skills. So things could be number of staff training days. Again, you might want to look at customer service training to show the examiner that you have thought about this is about a hotel and what would the rationale be. Well, you want to make sure the people who are frontline in your hotel are trained to deal with customer complaints or particular customer queries. Um, employee satisfaction. Again, similar type logic that if you have a satisfied workforce, that is going to project onto a happy customer, which again is hopefully going to lead to uh, ultimately a profitable business. So there's plenty of other ones you can look at there. Staff turnover is an obvious one, so they're very much linked. Or you might go at number of new night, new rooms via packages. So if you're selling new rooms or new packages, you want to see well how much traction has that taken? Is that going to be a new part of the business? Are we constantly trying to innovate with new services and new offerings um, to the market? So again, there's plenty of choice there. All you're looking for, it's important to be concise there, you're looking for two measures from each. So put your best two forward and try and give a very short, concise rationale. So you're seeing here, you're going to have two measures by four perspectives, eight measures. So eight measures, you probably look at maybe a mark per measure and a small half a mark each for the rationale. So you're trying to always think like the examiner. There's no point giving four measures for financial and not getting to learning and growth. You're not going to get rewarded for giving four in one and none in the other. So try and be strategic, and that's all come down to exam technique as well. So in terms of the balance scorecard, the two key things you have to take are you have to be specific to the case study and ideally try and lay it out as deliberate as possible, such as a tabular approach here, which shows the examiner you're hitting the key requirements they've asked for. Go back and look at prior examiner reports, particularly for SFMA. A lot of students are missing out on easy marks because they're not reading the question carefully enough. So the final requirement here was a kind of an unusual one that was a very standalone issue. Did you kind of think more commercially yourself, how would I figure out whether this is worthwhile or not for um, the company? So you're asked to critically evaluate. So watch for that verb. It means the pros and the cons. Values proposal from a financial and commercial perspective. So make sure you hit both financial and commercially means does it make business sense? Not just financially, but more strategically, more longer term. So you're told here about the value perspective regarding the other hotel, the View Hotel. So value will market the hotel on its website, generating additional bookings. So similar to like booking.com or something like that. And value has 20 other hotels on the website of similar size and location. And they're going to give financial incentives to get the hotels to essentially promote each other to departing guests. So every time a hotel in the group has departing guests, they'll say, why not try another hotel in our 
group, marketing group. But of course, that's going to come at a cost. Value, the website are going to charge a 25% commission on any additional room revenue, plus a fixed subscription fee, so a fixed fee per year of 50 grand. So we know what the fees are, what benefit do we think it's going to bring to the business. Um, the numbers reckon the average number of rooms are going to increase by 20%, and the variable cost per room is 45. So that's obviously for cleaning, checking in, checking out, etc. And additionally, each year value are going to give a series of KPIs using the industry, so it's going to be very useful. And every hotel in the portfolio uh, will receive its own individual ones and also an average to benchmark themselves against. So the first thing we're going to look at, does this make sense financially? So it's going to cost 50 grand a year and they're going to 25% of additional revenue. All right, so they're the two key fees we have to look at. So it's important now we have to figure out, well, what is the cost and what are the benefits? So that's essentially what you're looking for from a financial perspective. And the first key thing you have to think about is, well, how much additional income am I going to get from going on this site? When you're told in the question, you think they're going to be an increase in rooms occupied by 20%. So current rooms occupied. So what is the current room occupation for the view hotel? And you're told this in the question. The view has 100 rooms, but the average occupancy is 60%. So in this case here for, for at the View Hotel, you're probably looking at 100 rooms. They're open 365 days a year. And on average, 60% of the rooms, so 60 rooms, are filled every night. So that means for every night you have 60 rooms times 365, and each room will generate revenue of €110 Euro per night. Right, so the current rooms occupied are 100 rooms times 0 0.6 times 365, 21,900 per annum. And that means the current revenue here, current revenue will be 21,000 rooms times 110. So the current revenue is 2.409 million. So we're saying that is what the story is without having um, your site on the value website. So if we do put it in, the additional rooms so the additional rooms here will be 20% uplift. So you're going to get an additional 4,380. So I'll just put there 20% uplift. You're told that from the question. And that means the additional revenue will be 4380 times 110. So the additional revenue you're getting from this uh, potential transaction is 481,000. But it's important to note, well, firstly, you're not going to get that. That's not going to be the net benefit because each room per night costs 45. So you have to count additional variable costs are 45 euro per hotel room. So for every room you have, you're essentially only making a benefit of 65, which is the contribution. Your sales price, which is 110 per night, minus your variable cost. So you're losing another 197 there for the variable costs. And you also have, don't forget, you have the commission, which is 25% of the revenue. So as well as having to pay the variable cost, you have to pay 25% of the additional revenue as a commission fee. So you're told that here, the commission based on the additional room revenue. So we have additional revenue in a 481, additional variable costs, the commission to be paid, and in the fixed annual fee, which in this case would be 50 grand. So overall then, you're looking at the benefit, which is the additional income, plus the additional costs, give a net benefit overall of 114 grand positive. So it looks like from a financial perspective there, this makes sense, that you're, it's a net incremental benefit of 114,000 euro.
So remember, we've done one of the requirements now. From a financial perspective, it looks like it makes sense. But it's important, we have to critically evaluate it from a commercial perspective as well. So that means, well, what are the pros and cons of something like this? And again, try and be deliberate to the examiner. I would list out what are the pros, and then I'd show the examiner I've thought about the cons as well. So there's no ambiguity, there's no kind of pos possible misunderstanding. You've clearly and deliberately answered the specific questions. So what are the pros from this? Well, again, the obvious ones, and don't be afraid to state the obvious, it does increase the awareness or brand awareness um, of the View Hotel because it's going to be on this site, which obviously is going to have a lot of traffic and footfall, and it's also going to get some promotion from departing or from other hotels where they've been guests. So that's an obvious benefit. It looks like it is going to be um, beneficial from a a financial perspective which is obviously good to boost the performance and another benefit is we're going to get average KPIs for a hotel portfolio which is remember of similar size and location which can be very good to try and benchmark our performance which the view hotel may not have had before so again from a commercial there are key things that this does make sense however and this is where a lot of students fell down is they didn't actually address the negatives well, if you think about it from a negative perspective, what might it be? Well, one key one is, if our assumption about what uplift may be, if that falls, it may no longer be commercially viable. So again, how sure are we that 20% of an additional rooms will become um, used or we'll be able to sell them if we go on the values portfolio or go on the value website? Again, is there any proof of that based on prior performance because if not remember we're still locked into a 50,000 euro fee annually so even if we have no uplift and it doesn't do anything for us we still have to pay this company 50,000 so that is one key issue or disadvantage from a commercial perspective the other obvious one then is around the commission it's a very large commission and you may have to look to renegotiate that to say well if we don't a good student might suggest, well, if you don't have a 20% uplift, we may have a staggered, the less of an uplift we have, the less of a commission you're going to get. So, for example, if there's only a 10% uplift, you're only going to get a 15% commission. So you're trying to incentivize them to make sure everyone's incentives are aligned to try and get the best uh, uplift as possible. And the other one to watch is, as well, from a more uh, marketing and commercial perspective, is if they are all similar hotels, similar size and location, that means there's going to be a lot of competition. And if the view hotel is not of that standard, or they can't compete with those hotels in terms of their unique selling points, they may get crowded out um, if they go on to a site like the value site. So it's important that the marketing manager and whoever agrees to this is fairly comfortable that if they are being benchmarked, um, by a customer on that website that they will be able to stand their loan and they will look attractive because otherwise it will defeat the purpose and you will never get any additional um, uplift uh, in income from customers. So this question was summer 2016 question 2. Again very popular from the customer or the should I say the students perspective in that they actually was the most popular three quarters of the students actually sat it however unfortunately it was the lowest marked and the examiner gave very specific reasons there, the lowest average mark, because candidates did not read the question and they did not address exactly what was required. And that is a big thing at SFMA because it is open book exam, the examiner is looking for very specific applied answers to the facts of the case. So again, it's good to go back and make sure you read the examiner reports so you know exactly where students have fallen down on in past exams. So that was summer 16 question 2 looking at the area of performance management.